Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and today we are going to do one more flight in the Indiebuilds A300 freighter. And as many of you have requested me to feature it in another video, we are going to do this one from Indiebuilds new London Luton scenery. So this one promises to be quite an exciting one as we do have a very busy Luton right now in Vatsim, even though it is just a Tuesday afternoon. So things do and promise to be rather exciting. Knowing my luck, obviously ATC is probably going to be offline by the time that we actually depart, but we are going to try our luck nonetheless. So join me up in the cockpit of our A300. You can see our current configuration over here. And if we have a look at our general flight plan, then we are going to depart from Luton with destination Leipzig, which is going to be the EAT or DHL flight 2213. And we've got 34,000 kilograms of cargo on board, plan flight level 350. Now, the routing is a real world routing that's uh, been flown about in 2022, I believe. And if we do have a look at our destination, we can see Leipzig has a runway 26, so the wind is pretty much straight out, but there are some lovely gusts forecast there, even right now, temporary gusts 30 degrees off 40 knots. So that it promises to be rather lovely. Now, likewise, looking into the weather over in Dresden over here, it's likewise not all that good. Frankfurt's forecast to be gusty as well down the runway. And in Hanover, we have the same. And finally, in Berlin, we also have the same. So it's pretty much the same weather everywhere. In other words, we're just going to take fuel for a second approach in case something does go wrong. So looking into our fuel planning right up here, we're planned with 12 tons of fuel. Let's make that another uh, 15 minutes, so 1,000 extra, so give me 13 tons of fuel, and that should be good for our flight. So going into the weight and balance, 13 tons is what we have ordered, and they should be refueling the aircraft as we speak, but we're going to see that once we power it up. Okay, so that is our general idea of what we are going to do today. We are, of course, flying the Pratt & Whitney engines once again, and we do have the modern radio panel installed, on which I just released my tutorial. So if you've got questions on that one, you should have a look at that tutorial. All right then, let's go ahead and power up our airplane. Once again, this video is not intended as a complete tutorial, more like flying the airplane using realistic procedures all the way. So, um... Again, if you are interested in a tutorial, I have done one on the A300. Okay then, so, APU fire test, and that is looking good. All right, so we do have power, external power can come online. I'm not gonna start the APU just yet. So, IRS is going on, and we do have that one on present position system number one. Oxygen system is coming online. And the annunciator lights. Are all looking good. Very good. Then, let's have a quick look at the oil. Quantity is looking good. Hydraulics are looking good as well, and before we go and start up the APU, very quick look back here as well. And looking at that, APU used up a little bit of oil, but is generally okay. Alright then, so, while we let the airplane power itself up, and while the cargo loading is in progress, let's go ahead and continue with our walk around. And we're going to start right down here on the fuselage, with the... Um, Static ports, which are clear. Then, moving forward, we've got the nose wheels all looking good. Looking up into the um, external power hatch, which is good as well. No sign of any damages or something. And then moving on to our pitot and static probes, which are looking... Is that a pushback tuck? Whoopsie. Okay, so, probes looking good. Then moving up forward. Static ports are clear onto the engine and they are windmilling over here but slowly enough that we can somewhat check the leading edges of the fan blades which are looking good at the moment okay then moving down the um, cowling is latched that's probably the most important check here and then the um, outlet part of our engine is looking good as well okay cool so follow me around the wing checking the leading edges Making sure that that little white cross is visible up there. 
Sometimes a little bit moved, but you can see it somewhat. Okay then, moving along the aft edge of a wing down to the main landing gear and there are no signs of visible damages on any of those tires. Even after I've done a couple landings on tight now, they are still in a good shape. That's probably the important thing for us to check over here. So everything is looking good. And then we can move along the aft end of our airplane. Looks like they are done loading the cargo here already. That's quite good. Okay then, so bleeding edges are looking fine moving on. Trailing edges, no sign of damages or bird strikes or anything. And that is looking awesome. Alright then, let's continue on. So, landing gear, the tires are still okay. Unbelievable, even though I'm landing the plane regularly, the tires are still alright. Oh well, should probably tell my employer that. Then they might not blame me all the time for it. Okay, just joking, of course. So, the wing's trailing edge is looking good, the cross is visible, and the leading edge is looking good as well. Leading us on to the engine, and we have no sign of visible damages, no objects in sight. The lower side is looking good, and the engine inlet is looking good. Again, windmilling a little bit, but the leading edges are looking good as well. Alright, and with that, we now know that our airplane is fit to fly. So, follow me upstairs and ride back into the cockpit. Here we are! So let's go ahead with our system setup then. Today we are going from Echo... Yes, you are going to get the RS along in a few moments. Okay. So, from Luton to Leipzig, and we are going to take the route that we have in here, and our alternate is going to be Dresden. Okay, so, position looks good, we're going to align that, and then we can start with our general flight deck procedures. RS alignment still in progress. Most important button in the airplane, the coffee maker button. Okay, looking good. So, refueling seems completed. And the distribution is okay. That means we can already turn on the fuel pumps. Awesome, and then APU is going to remain off for just now, window heater coming on, and the fire test on the last remaining engine here. Let me try this. Okay, we can actually hit that button without accidentally pulling the APU fire agent. I would not have been surprised at all if that happened to me nonetheless, but hey. Okay, so our flight deck is, or our overhead at least, is pretty much done, and let's go ahead and um, do the main panel here. Do we have some weather information already? Let's see that. QNH 1003. Interesting that it actually starts beeping when we do the checks. I would not have expected that, but okay, so be it. Okay, so then 1003. Now let's just go ahead and. Uh, well, I'm a little bit afraid of pulling off the uh, shocks while the external power is still connected. I'm a bit afraid of the plane just shutting down then. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, we are going to skip over the brake check. So, landing elevation in Leipzig. Should be some 600 feet if I'm not mistaken, but let's have a quick look into the flight plan to find out. Okay, here we go. 470. That is fine for me as well. We'll put it at 500 then, that's close enough. Okay, landing gear config warning is working, and then we can get down to our radios. So, I'm just not going to um, tune in straight away to add traffic control, but I will pre-select the delivery frequency already. So, let's have a quick look as to what it is. Navigraph, Luton. That's my airport trunk, please. 
Here we go, airport info, loot and delivery, 121885. Okay, that's pre-selected already. Excellent, so, um... On the standby we can pre-select the ATIS, 120580. Like that, but let's go ahead and see if we can simply request it, that might make our life a lot easier. So, AOC, pre-flight will do in a moment, weather and ATIS, I want an ATIS. Echo, Golf, Golf, Whiskey please. Like that, and sent. Okay, it is requested that is out. Let's see if it's actually going to come. There seem to be a couple issues at this moment with this system, but we'll see about it. Otherwise, we can always request the meta, so... Let's just send that out as well. And then we'll see what is going to come back. Okay, so pre-flight, let's see if they do support PDC over here. So, we're in uh, stand 3-0, if I'm not mistaken. Quick check. Yeah, stand 3-0, there it is written. And yeah, it is. do we have something by now? Not really, huh? We've requested all that good stuff, but didn't get anything back. Okay. Well, in that case, we might just have to listen to the voice ages. 210 and 280 degrees, visibility 10 kilometers or more, scattered 1,700 feet, broken 2,400 feet, broken 2,800 feet, temperature plus 1, 2, G point plus eight QNH one zero zero three. Acknowledge receipt of information, Golf, and advise aircraft type on first contact. Okay, so information Loop Golf. Information I'm just going to send Golf. that out already. Time one zero five zero Zulu. Runway in use two five. Transition level flight level seven five. Surface wind two four zero degrees one zero knots. Varying between 210 and 280 degrees, visibility 10 kilometers or more, scattered 1,700 feet, broken Okay, so with that we've basically feet, heard it. Broken 2,800 feet, temperature plus 1, 2, G Okay, so back to um, guard frequency for now. Okay then, so, um, standard squawk 2000, I'll just put that in so that we don't accidentally activate on a VFR squawk or something the like. Okay, weather radar tilt about 5 degrees up should be fine. And with that, let's go ahead with our FMS setup. Okay, so, cost index today 50, and our flight ID is the postman 2213. Okay then, so, flight plan, we're going towards match, so let's see, um, runway 25, and match 3 Bravo, I believe, is it. But before we check all those, um, points, we are definitely going to, um, we're definitely going to go ahead and get our IFR clearance before we do all the checking and the briefing. Okay, so, for Leipzig arrivals, ILS 26 left, and we come in via Kojak, so it's going to be the Kojak 1 Victor and the Jaga Transition. Alright, insert that. So, um... Okay, we don't get maximum and optimum. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. If It does definitely help if you insert the weights beforehand. Okay, so, 13 tons of fuel. Let's see what the zero fuel weight currently is. Um, weight and balance. Here we go. Okay, so... Zero fuel weight, 114.7. One of the things I like about cargo flying is that you have the weights available so early because everything is known. Okay, 29.7 zero fuel weight CG. Like that. And that leads us on to the takeoff performance. Let's go ahead and do some mathematics here. And this is going to be interesting because Luton does not have a very long runway. So let's see what we will be able to do. Runway 25. And as you can see over here, um, 2,164 meters. 
so really not a very long one but the wind is straight down and we are not too heavy so let's see 58 degrees flax I'm not convinced force toga okay so 139 139 141 VPS primary that means the IRS has finished aligning that is awesome because we will need it to insert the V2 here. So 139, 139, and 141 going into the FCU. And since the RS has finished aligning, we can turn that good stuff on. And here we go, 141. Okay, awesome. So all that good stuff is in. Thrust reduction and acceleration can be 1,540 each. Yes, thank you. So 1540, 1540. And the engine out stuff will leave at 1500 AGL. Okay, so clean speed is going to be 211. And we do only have speed restrictions at 220. So let's go ahead and pre-select 220. That is going to give us a little bit of a margin above the clean speed while matching the ATC speed restrictions. Okay, so that good stuff is in. Well then, before we are going to check anything else, let's go ahead and grab our IFR clearance. And it is rather busy here, but that's to be expected. Information goal. Information goal. Information goal. Information goal. Information goal. Information Information Come on, read back your clearance, then we can go for ours. So, how's it going? Gluten delivery, good afternoon, postman 2213, information golf A300, request clearance to live session. Postman 2213, Luton delivery. Good afternoon, report Stand three zero, postman two two one three. Oh, thank you, speaker. Just interrupt me. The five zero correct. Break postman two two one three. Luton delivery. Good morning. Clearance is the most legal. The mastery and guitar. Check one way two five. Caution. Check one way two five. Two two five five. Postman 2213, cleared slot safe match 3, Yankee departure, squawk 2215. Squawk 2255, postman 2213. Okay, so it's going to be a different departure, and the squawk 2255. So 2255 is in, and then let's just reselect our departure, 3 Yankee it is. So, sit and then. Might just have to deselect that. So, from a 2 5 is in, match 3 Yankee. Here we go. Okay, insert. So, that's the ANA version of the sit, I suppose. But let's go ahead and have a look into Navigraph to see what we've got. So, match 3 Yankee ANA. Okay, so, um, let's see, transition altitude 6000, departure could be either of the two. Um, speed, after golf with ECR 12, max 250 below level 100. Okay, so we've got golf whiskey. Okay, so it's basically 220 until we're beam the field, climbing 4000 initially, and thereafter, climb to 5000 in those three nautical miles there. Okay. 
of Excellent. Uh, so that's what ATC meant when they sapped um, portion stepped claw. That is what we've got over here as well. But I suppose that traffic control might just lift those restrictions for us. We will see about it. Okay, so let's see. Waypoint 01, max 220 between 1030 and 4000. And that's what we have right here. So, plan constraint. Let's go ahead and have a look. Then, waypoint 06, 220 between 3 and 4. And that is what we have. Then, waypoint 12. Waypoint 16, waypoint 19. Uh, number 49, so you number got 49. it. 12, 16, 19. Right, on to Brookman's right, Park. Right. And 5,000 feet over here from 19 and Brookman's Park right, on. And thereafter to match climbing 5,000. Okay, right, and that one, is what we have. Okay, so initially we go up to 4,000 and thereafter to 5,000 later on. So we're going to put 4,000 in here for now. Okay, so. That good stuff is done, then let's just go ahead and grab our airfield chart once again, runway track 254. And here we go, two, come on, you can do it. Here we go, 254. Okay, awesome, so with that we're pretty much done with the pre-flight procedures. I would say then we can go for our briefing. First officer, it's your turn. Okay, so, um, the plan is to depart Luton runway 25 on the match 3 Yankee departure, climbing 4,000 at first, 5,000 at later, and MSA-wise we're looking at about 3,000 safe all around. Extra fuel and time, we do have one extra go, so we're looking at about 15 minutes. Alright, hotspots for the taxi then. Luton can be a little bit um, complicated at times. I do guess that we're going to push back here and into Echo and then taxi southbound via Delta or Foxtrot here. And then we got to backtrack from Alpha 1 and we definitely need the full line for our departure. Now, stop margin for reject the takeoff is only a few meters, so um, got to keep that in mind. Engine out sits straight ahead 25 miles, climbing 3000. Full immediate return, Luton is rather short, but is possible at 2,162 meters. But if we just fly 15 miles into the um, East Ali direction, then we got Stansted with almost 4 kilometers of runway, which might be a better option to return to. Okay, special and non-standard operation, we don't have anything over there. Um, we could say the stepped climb is a bit of a special operation, but um, it's really just 3 nautical miles to gain 1,000, so it shouldn't be much of a problem there. Okay. Any threats? One, two, one, definitely. Yeah. Five, goodbye. Have Getting to stop on the um, turn pad at the end. So just got to remember that we are going to use. Um, we're going to make the turn initially steering out to the left and down American to the right. So we're going to use a little bit of thrust on the left engine in order to get the airplane around the turn properly. Any questions? No? That is awesome. In that case, let's go ahead with the before start checklist. Cockpit preparation yeah. completed. Signs on auto. Fuel quantity. 13 tons, navigation checked set, landing elevation uh, yeah, I'll just put my set, altimeters Sorry, QNH 1003, and brake in any skid, normal on. Before start checklist complete down to the line. Delivery, good afternoon. Postman 67 Bravo requesting payments to Winship. Okay, so request pushback and departure. Postman 67 Bravo. In the meantime, let's just go to the back and close those doors. Main entry door is closed already, so it's just going to be down to this one. Okay. American 621, refreshing push and stop. Stand by. Yeah, always lovely when people can't. Okay, arm the doors, and we are good to go. So, starting APU. Postman 2213, request push and start. Uh, 
don't think that was for us. I do think that was for the American, probably. Postman 2213, request push and start. Yes, no, maybe. Okay, so. A firm, postman 2213, ready for push. One two one does mode seven five five. Postman two two one three. Bye now. Okay, so APU is about ready. American six two one after the Delta A three twenty zero passes right to left behind. Cross that booth. Push back after Delta. Okay, APU running. Good morning, Steve 294, Luton Ground, good afternoon, Postman 2213, happy request, push and start, stand 30. Postman 2213, Luton Ground, very good morning, afternoon, even. Uh, push that approved. Uh, you can push the echo for you for Push start approved onto echo 3 if GSX supports that. Postman 2213. Okay, below the line please. Winners and doors. Closed. Easy Beacon 347 mic. On Park and Break. Set. Before start check is complete. Advise them if they can accept alpha 1 of the 5 for them. Okay, so. Continue push. Now let's see what they have in the profile. Facing east on Echo 3, awesome. Okay, ground from cockpit, go ahead. So, push start approved, Echo 3, park break is now released. Roger, starting the pushback. So just look at that, how busy it is over here. That's quite incredible for such a short airport. Look at that, one guy taxiing there, one there, two over there. And all, the, all of those need to backtrack Hacky before Apple they Apple. can actually depart. So, that is an indication there might be a little bit of delay here, but it is likewise an indication how much people appreciate the Luton scenery from any builds. And I do have to say, it does look pretty good over here, doesn't it? American 621. Okay, so Echo 3 is probably going to be over there, so it is going to take us a while to do that pushback. For that reason, I'm not starting the engines just yet, as it would just be a waste of fuel, really. Taxi Delta Alpha Hold Alpha One, was it? Hey, fam. But looks like the pushback is done pretty well. The GSX profile is from Indie Builds themselves. You can download it in the Indie Manager. So, as you can see, it seems to work pretty well. They did a good job on that. Especially getting that um, pushback route out to Echo 3. ATC knows about it as well. That is awesome. I mean, they know their Apple. That's not a question. But looks like GSX does as well. That's quite awesome. Okay, once we're out of the cargo apron, then we're going to um, commence our engine start. Still got to do the turnaround here, so we do have a plethora of time available. Is that a triple seven over there? I don't know if you shall with triple seven in Luton. My condolences. Oh, what's it doing now? That looked interesting down here. But okay, here we go. Okay, so still got to push around the corner. But I'd say we can slowly start um, commencing our entrance. Uh, Steve, you're three on my four. Let's do push and Okay, so. Stand by. Jerry, one, two, and five. Stand six for start for you, face safe. Engine two start. Face south approved. Scandinavian one, two, and five. Thank you. And two? All pressure. And one. And here it comes. 
Easy one five two eight X ray, the whole position is camp. Okay, that's a good start on engine number two, starting engine one. Engine one start. And two. Graph station availability one. Hold pressure. And one. Stand by. And here we are, let's take on to Echo 3. So, welcome Rick Sat. And that is... Welcome on 3926, um, are you able... Is there enough room for you to tax onto Alpha for the D's yet? So ground, we've got two good starts, uh, clear disconnection on the pin on the left side, the please, and have a wonderful day. So, let's see, in terms of trim, what do we need? Of gravity 31.9, and we have that down trim 0 0.2. Something like that. Okay, so where is the ground crew? Okay, there she comes, and she is holding a pin. Awesome. Off the start checklist, pitch trim. Point two down, set, rudder trim, zero, spoilers, armed, slots, flaps, 15, 15. Okay, uh, Econ status, checked, any eyes, off, hand signal. Let's see, there she is. Hand signal is received after start check is complete. Flight control check, please. Pull up. Pull down. Neutral. Pull left. Full right, American neutral, two, rudder, full left, full right, neutral. Postman 2213 heavy, request taxi. Empty. American yeah, Sorry, the American is interrupting you. Please say again for Postman 2213. Jeff 555, advise them if they can accept help of one or five for them, please. Blocked. American 621, contact Lucy Tower, 132, okay, that's 5, the American 5, first. Advise that they can accept Alpha 1 of a 5 for left, please. Contacting decimal 132, des uh, contacting 132, decimal 555. Welcome 2926, someone's uh, on your phone, taxi stand 71. Moving ground, should I contact? Um, what is everyone doing here? That's chaos. I have a feeling they got a little problem with the guy in front of me. That seems to be a postman. But someone's just locked in on the gate where I just pushed off, so where are they going to park in now? I mean, over here is... Normally another cargo stand, but there's static aircraft over here. Trim 859 after the Stevedate 20 passenger left to right, that's the Bravo stand 2. That's just easy to get ready from the left to right. Unbelievable. How broke can a radio be? Is he trying to transmit through a potato? Station, to Postman 2213, request taxi. Uh, 
Plus one fifty one, please. Sorry about that. Taxi Delta or Delta One. Taxi Delta hold Delta One. Postman two two one three. Ground uh, Postman six seven Bravo. It's ten three. Okay, one, so one, Delta hold Delta One postman and six, Delta seven, One seven, is seven, down here. Okay, so just post to the right. I'll shot in front of the parallel taxiway. Back into our stand. We're having an electrical issue. Okay. uh... And here we go. Okay, right track. Pressure zero. Clear on both sides. First to the right. Doing ground easy, so two seven six seven one, ready for the start. I do find that new ground a little unrealistic. Like right now, we are really taking a very, a very not so sharp turn. This was quite a relaxed one, and still we lost a couple of knots of speed there. That is really a little bit overdone. But well, what do you expect from Microsoft? Huh? Okay, so we are going uh, downhill over here. Won't need much thrust, so I've just gave it a little bit to uh, get going, and now I'll put it back to idle. And we just got to find Delta One. There's a sign for Delta two up there but it should be just in front of the parallel taxiway there i believe so we just gotta go a little bit straight ahead and that's it okay so in terms of our um briefings and checklists there are so many aircraft holding there at the holding point let's taxi the airplane where we want it to get and we are going to run anything that we need right after that look how busy it is the last time i've seen an airport that busy and that's in was um, back in the day when Amsterdam got released, but I would never have imagined that Loop is such a popular scenery. Right, so Delta One. Apparently there is no sign right here. I mean, Delta One is just down here. We know that from the chart we looked at previously, but I'm going to stop over here then in order not to block the roads. Brake set, taxi light off. The ladder is rather important because, as I mentioned, I stopped here in order not to block that road um, running left right over here. And if my taxi lights were still on, no aircraft would drive across that road. The taxi light basically is the indication to the uh, drivers that we are stopping for them. Obviously, on an airport, aircraft usually have priority. Aircraft usually have priority over anything else, but. Um, Nonetheless, you know, if I taxied all the way up here, I would block the road completely because this is Delta One. So then I'd just block the road for no reason. Um, and we really don't want to do that. So what's worth saying then is, of course, the drivers would still stop there because they don't know if we just hook up the lights and might get taxi clearance. I mean, unless you're suicidal, you still wouldn't tank or drive in front of an aircraft. But usually, you know, they make eye contact with you, you wave them over, and then they just pass, and that's not a problem. Okay, so, we did the flight control check, then let's go ahead with the rest of our procedures here. Auto brake, weather radar, takeoff config. Probably gonna get a warning for the parking brake now. No, okay, awesome. So takeoff test normal, then let's go with it ahead with the before takeoff checklist down to the line. Flight controls, checked, briefing, confirmed, slap flaps, 15, 15, performance and FMAs. So we've got 139, 139, 141 set. Okay, takeoff config, check, transponder, squawk, and Tara. Set before takeoff checklist, complete down to the line. So we did say standby for a controller change in progress. We are just going to wait for that. And ultimately, there's still three aircraft in front of us, so there is no sense just... Okay, that's perfect. So the new controller is now here. We should hopefully get our continued tax clearance in a moment. Another guy landing.
Just gonna make sure that we actually got um Probably that guy there, is he? Okay, Bravo, uh, correction, Steve is 719 and taxi stand. Do you have a stand of choice? Steve is 719 taxi stand via Bravo. And he better get moving now because the next Steve guy needs to vacate the wrong way. We can relax here. We have no hurry. There's still so many aircraft ahead of us at the holding point. Continue holding point Alpha One Delta and Alpha Post Man Two Two One Three. Ground easy seven two seven zero seven one ready for the press. Okay, press release. Alpha One is just over here. And now we gotta go upstairs, so all the thrust will be needed for that. As you can see, it rolls nicely. Okay, clear left and right. So the signs are on again, or the lights are on again. That's the signal to all the cars to stop driving. Even though you sometimes need to be really careful, because there will often be some suicidal drivers who still attempt to somehow manage to get in the way and think they can slip through. That happens every now and then, so you've got to be really careful when crossing those roads. Postman 2213, contact Luton Tower, 132 Postman 2213, bye now. Okay, that's obviously perfect timing here, right when we got to drive a turn. But we have no hurry, so I'm just going to do that turn first, and then... Um, we do the rest later. Uh, two seconds, I'll go check that BMA 829. Alright, so. Okay, that is positive identification of the controller, so with that done, we can go ahead and already pre-select our departure frequency. So that's probably going to be 12955 today, if I'm looking into the uh, list of... No, actually it might be one of the long radars. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Blue tag, uh, Dark Moon, Postman... 2213 heavy, we need to backtrack and ready for departure. Apostman 2213 heavy, we lose some power. That is no worries. Alright, I told them that we need to backtrack straight away because they asked a couple other aircraft um, if they want to. Um, if they want. Okay, 120 decimal, your mobile is too loud. Okay, definitely going to keep a bit of distance here from the 777, because that thing, when they add thrust, they're just going to blow us away. Such a superb engine, that um, GE engine. But, just a little theory on why I stopped here. Look at the engines, and how they are going to just about blow that thrust away from our engine intakes. Looks like I haven't stopped perfectly on the center line, but well, as long as the engines don't go over the taxiway edge, that is completely fine. And by the way, I would never taxi my airplane that close to any of the other aircraft there. This is really, um, if we do this, well, the um, British Airways is just going to smell the um, jet exhaust of the easy jet and Seeing of how long they're going to stand that close to one another, I would absolutely not be surprised if um, some people sitting next to the air conditioning outlets in that 777 would get really dizzy by now. And likewise, the EasyJet is so close to the American, um, you really don't want that smell inside your airplane. I mean, usually you don't have to keep as much distance as I'm doing right now. I'm simply doing it because, well, you can see I'm not blocking anymore. There are a couple of aircraft coming there, but there's 
plenty of space here. Could have tacked it a bit closer, but then again, you really don't want to have that um, jet exhaust smell in your airplane. Not even if you're an FG and you're flying the freighter where there's just two of you, you really don't want it. Look at that, the American is taking the intersection departure. That's like 1700 meters? American 61 clip takeoff. Assuming that he actually flies over to the US, that would be completely impossible. Now obviously the 777 has turned a bit, so we can go a little bit closer than uh, where we are right now. Delta 250, who should I contact now? Okay, one two zero zero two five is the departure frequency. We remember that. So one two zero point zero two five. Pre-selected. Okay, that's nice. He's taking the easy out for an immediate. Uh, American 621, call London, and we can already see the arriving traffic over there. I do hope that that is going to work American out eventually. American 621 contacting London on... What was that again, sorry? 120025. 1-2-0-0-2-5 So the Ryan area is thousand above, that means he's roughly three miles out. That's pretty nice that they do this. Um, so in fact, in Germany, they're often really careful with those intersection departures. So um, I'm rather happy that they do these rather close departures here in uh, London and Batson, because with the amount of traffic they have, it might just get really, really hard to, um, might just get really, really hard to to otherwise get all the traffic handled. Now it's going to be exciting to see what the 777 is going to do, because even a full length departure for a 777 on a 2100 meter runway is going to be pretty tight, pretty pretty tight, regardless of how, um, regardless of how light or not he is. Negative. <laughs> okay, well, good luck for that. 1,771 meters. I really hope he's just doing a ferry over to one of the other London airports or something the like. Okay, Ryanair, show me something. I want to see you bang it right into the market. Flare, 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 flare. Come on. That's the end of the touchdown zone. Well, that was interesting. That's exactly what you don't do in a short runway like this. You just bang it onto the market. Man, it's really not that easy to see something in here. I wonder if that is realistic. Like, the viewpoint looks pretty low to me. The 
Postman 221, please, Alpha 1, backtrack and line up runway 25. Well, Alpha 1, backtrack and line up too far, Postman 2213. Line up 6, Tango Papa, uh, hold Bravo 6, count 1 to 1, this is 7. Okay, five. clear right side. Hold the Bravo 6, contact ground 1 to 1. There is the guy on approach five there, five but nothing on the TCAS yet. Keep it 5 and 0, call London Control 1 to 0, Tango 25. Speedbird 394, uh, close to Alpha 1. Good afternoon, Speedbird 720, information, Golf, 6 miles, final around with 25. 6 miles, that might end up tight. Speedbird 727, Luton Tower, 1 departure ahead of you, first wind 2 south of everything, 1 1 knot, looking to approach 1 2 5. Can you go again for Speedbird 727? Chipper 77, continue approach, only 2 5 on departure ahead. Okay, departure before again. takeoff checklist Good below the line, approach. cabin secure, Chica's tower, packs, on, ignition off, any ice off. Before takeoff checklist below. Postman 2 to 1 3, uh, say again the wind, your background sounds are really loud from your mobile. Uh, runway 2 5, clear for takeoff. So, a bit of thrust on engine number one now to get it around the turn without stopping. And he's just sent us the wind by text. Well, so be it. Okay then, ready. Take off. Sub take off thrust. Postman 77 Bravo, behind the landing British Airways LSA 320. Via Alpha 1, backtrack and line up on the 25 behind. 100 knots. Landing up behind Check. the landing A320 and backtrack speed bird correction. Uh, Postman 67 Bravo. B1, Rose 8. Positive climb. Gear up. Speedbird 727, only 25, land. Switch around, speedbird 727. Postman 2213, call London, that is on uh, 132, decimal 605. 132605, postman 2213. Okay, flaps 1. So, what is the autopilot doing when it all start pretty early, but... Okay, autopilot off, that is overshooting. Frickin' hell. What was that? Okay, flap zero. That was complete autopilot failure here. And now it's messing up the navigation as well. Okay. Flight direct off. That was complete autopilot failure here. Well, we've got to focus on flying it first now before calling ATC. Finally, good afternoon, Postman 2213, happy flights, uh, correct in altitude 4000. Postman 2213, Lancaster Control, hello, you can fly now, flight level 150. Climb now, flight level 150, postman 2213. Okay, level change. Temperature 8, engine ATI is on. Ah, looks like I forgot to turn on those uh, lights there, but that would have been part of monitoring work. Okay, 3 does have a kilo rate check. Well, this is exactly what you want to avoid doing. Yeah, uh, so basically uh, something has happened and then they just get up automatically uh, because then I heard like from the simulator that uh, the, the, the agency was fixed. So, uh, what was my fault? Sorry, to be Okay, you're leaving my address now anyway, but uh, yeah, you just caused a conflict because I need to be on heading. But uh, anyway, just, just keep, keep an eye on it for next month. 
One of the Unicom now, though, wants to do that for me. Thank you. Sorry about that. Unicom will do this for Okay, so, set standard. Scan and cross check, passing level 83 now. Okay, gonna fly it first, and then we do the checklist thereafter. So the speed limit should still be 220. Yeah, that's why you don't hand fly a departure like this. But yeah, what can you do if the autopilot fails on you? Uh? Still on Gulf Whiskey Sierra 01, gotta fix that in a moment. And this is exactly what is not supposed to happen on an RMP departure, by the way. So let's go direct Gulf Whiskey Sierra 12. What's my view doing now? Okay, bring that flight director back. So, this looks rather believable. Let's give it a second try. Command 1. Yeah, this looks better. Okay, then, speed up to 50. On the broadcast, if you're on the ground, stand instead. Contact stand to the ground, 1, 2, 1, 7, 3, 0, like that. Vertical speed. Okay, so we still got the 250 knots limit, so nothing we can do about that, but after take off plan checklist. Flaps, flaps, retracted, landing gear, up neutral, packs, on, altimeters. Tennis. 60 Bravo, retract to Koku. Thousand to go. Uh, direct Koku. Bravo. Yes, one thousand. Okay, so then let's do the level one hundred checks. Um, yeah. Level two two one three. Climb flight level three five zero. Postman two two one three. Climb flight level three five zero. NTI is off as well. That flight level three five zero blue. Under control, hello. Level change. Postman six seven Bravo, out of runway two five. Okay. So that stuff's done. I'm gonna keep it on the. Um, I'm gonna keep it on the constraints here. He hasn't sat free speed yet. We are still flying the SID, so the climb now does not relieve us from the speed restriction then. By the way, why did this not go into order? Shouldn't it automatically go to order? Can you use profile mode, which I believe we did in the beginning? Okay. Well, so we maintain 250. Okay. Um. Well, that means we made it. Just took us a little while, but hey, we are here finally. Beautiful, isn't it? Really beautiful. I love the insulation of those modern aircraft. Really love it. Alright then guys, so, made it up into the air, and I'd say then I see you when we're getting a little bit closer to uh, Leipzig. So let's fast forward for a bit, and then I talk to you all later.
So, we have started our descent into Leipzig and we are already passing flight level 225. Let's have a quick overview of what we are about to do for our landing. Unfortunately, it looks like some of the air traffic controller was online when we departed, went offline by now, but who knows, with a little bit of luck, we might still um, catch one controller or another, and otherwise we are just going to fly a perfect unicorn landing. Now. Let's quickly talk about what we have actually entered in the FMS here for our arrival. You might have seen that I just skipped over it in the video. Do let me know if you want me to do those things in a full coverage or if you'd rather just um, have me skip over them like I did before. So, let's have a quick look now. We are going to fly the Kojak 1 Victor arrival, which we can see right up here, which is rather easy. You just go straight in, pretty much. And we are definitely going to follow those uh, waypoints over here instead of taking a shortcut because without our traffic control online at Leipzig you don't really have traffic information and as you can see over here parts of IFR profiles are with an airspace class echo so watch out for VFR traffic unknown to air traffic control. Nonetheless the speed limit is 250 below level 100 and as you can see we simply fly into a downwind and I have entered a 5,000 foot restriction over here at uh, 425 so that we will be able to fly a straight in approach on a runway 26. Now, as for the um, approach itself, it is going to be the ILS approach. And if we have a look at the um, weather that we've got down here, we've got clouds broken in 3,500, broken in 4,700, and the temperature 13 degrees QNH 1006. And temporary wind 260 degrees, 25 gust 40, so straight down the runway, a couple of gusts, making this approach a little bit more interesting. Now, in terms of um, the approach itself, it starts out at uh, Tarkoa in 3000 feet. It is a standard 3 degree glide path down to a minimum of 670, which we've dialed in over here. Now, in case of go around, straight out to 1.8 DME from uh, Lima Lima Delta, on a left hand turn, and we join the radio 092 out on Gotem until 51.5 and then basically back into the approach to Jaga. And that is how we fly this approach. Now, a couple of nuff aids we can tune then. Lima Lima Delta 1215. And we can just put that... Let's see. How do you activate those again? It's been a little while since I've filmed that little part of the A300. Okay, interesting. I can't seem to be able to activate those radios. Do we have a Ratnav page in here? I don't think we do, but don't worry about that too much. Um, because we are fully ANAF certified, so if we just have a look into the flight plan, then we can always just fly it straight off here, LLD1, 900, left hand turn, and then we can turn back in mount over here. So it's alright, we don't need those radios in auto to uh, back that up. We can just use it straight from the um, FMS. Nonetheless, do let me know in the comments below how to actually activate those radios. I thought you could do it using these knobs up here, but apparently that is uh, not how you do it. Okay then, so that much for our arrival briefing. I don't think there is actually much more to say about it over here. Um, Gonna vacate the runway to the left and then taxi to the main apron. Okay, let's start getting our speed back. We'll take 220 knots for the transition through class echo airspace. And here we go, 220. Okay, so in order to bring you all up to date, let's uh, just do a very quick arrival briefing. So first officer, you can start with this one. So we've got an NSA of 2800, Kojak 1 Victor arrival, ILS 26 left. The minimum is going to be 670. You can just pre-select that on the right side as well. Here we go. And the go around straight at one mile left turn onto the 098 outbound from GoTem. And thereafter we can... Um, 
simply follow the ANA procedure. Now, extra fuel and time, let's see what we got down here. 27 minutes extra in the form of two tons of fuel. Okay, the approach will be guided by the ILS for uh, flaps 20 landing. Stop margin is more than two kilometers. Reversals will be used, auto brake low, and we vacate the runway to the left hand side. We don't have any hotspots for the taxi in, however, we do have um, quite some gusts on the approach, which basically form the um, special stuff over here. So we do have quite some gusts and flying through airspace class echo. For the class echo, you can see already we're mitigating against it by reducing our speed towards 220. I'll just aid the plane a little bit with that. So give me 100 feet a minute down. Or just go on our star, that's fine for me as well. Okay, flight level 70 at first, 100 feet a minute down until our speed is down, and then we'll go back to profile mode. Okay, um, so for the gusts, we are going to take uh, 10 knots extra, so we've got an approach speed down here of 142. We're going to add 10 knots of wind correction to that, giving us 152. Yeah, um, apart from that, I don't really have anything. That's it, questions? No? Awesome. Okay, descent 3000 feet, QNH 1006. That's 1006 cross, check passing 9500. Now, check. Alrighty, approach checklist, please. Signs on, briefing confirmed, ECAM status checked, altimeters QNH 1006, minimum 670 set, ignition off, landing elevation 500, approach checklist complete. So we got like that's 8 miles plus another 5, 13 miles. I'll tell you what, I'll help, I'll help the plane a little bit here. So at the moment there is a ground controller online, 121805, I will pre-select that. Okay then, and from here on we just go down, and a beam taco we're going to make our uh, base turn. And already pre-select the heading bug, so it's 080 now, that means uh, 170 is going to be our base. Here we go. So, oh, might need a little bit of anti ice in a few moments. Let's have a look to the front. Yeah, engine anti ice on. And engine anti ice is on. Nice to see that they actually do spool up to a higher idle value now. Interesting, the arc mode. Let's try rows. Yeah, okay. I kind of hoped I could get a little bit nicer view here for when we actually pass a beam the final approach fix. But I guess when we're passing waypoint 426 over here, that should be a good note to start our base turn. And ILS is selected. Okay. Heading select, and we'll retract those speed brakes again. Traffic postman 2213 heavy right base for an ILS approach from A26 left. Right, let's start slowing down and we can take.
not according to Chicas. Okay then, it's lap 15. But nice to see that these guys are using um, Unicom. Yeah, that's a missed approach which just came into view over there. Okay then, right turn heading 230, clear to LS26 left. So, cat free, dual, glide slope localizer blue. So the wind should make us drift directly onto the uh, FAF. Looks like we had a little bit of rain here. That's our airport right over there. So that's overall looking pretty good for the approach. And I tell you what, let's go manual. Okay, autopilot, auto thrust off. Hoping that we won't need it anymore. I will have the speed brake already and turn the lights on. Leipzig traffic, I have here Whiskey Lima will be holding short runway 26 left on Hotel 8 for departure. Is anyone going to depart? Now? SM Postman 1 and 6 just lining up via Sierra 1, they were now in the take of 4. Watch your final line up behind you in the way. For the Postman 2 to 1, 3, 7 miles final, 2 to 6 left. Roger, I'll wait for the landing traffic and after the departure. I will call it 4 miles. If you're fast, you can go before that. Roger. Okay, I'll start. Let's not make things more complicated than we have to, right? If he can depart in front of us, then he please shall do it. Okay, glass stop star. Okay then. Let's just see, go around is to 5,000 feet. Go around altitude 5,000 feet. Set, room heading 2, 6. Reset. Okay, you're down, flaps 15, and final approach speed is going to be 152. Force man 2 to 1 speed, 5 cards final. If the Rhino is quick, you can go. Plus 20. Okay, then uh, Rhino Fuel with Lima will be immediate take off runway 26. Okay, then. Running checklist. Running gear. Down. Yeah, oopsie, what am I doing here? That's what I get for manually flying and trying to read a checklist. But nonetheless. Approach speed should be 142, so we are good now, and we'll catch up with the wind addition now. Okay, that's better. Okay, so, landing checklist. Landing it down, auto brakes, low, any skid on. And oh, that's a little bit of a thermal here. Okay, um, slot flaps. Why did they go to the full position? I want a flap 20. I don't know why we got the... Uh, Oh, I know why we got the uh, speed indication. Uh, keep the rate of descent at 1,200. Okay, um, spoilers, um, shall I check this complete? 
Okay, there is no more traffic over there. That is okay now. Man, the wind is rather interesting here. Just gotta be sure that we actually make the 500 foot gauge. Field elevation is 450, so we have like 70 feet. Speed is okay now, adding a bit more thrust, and here we are again, stable through the gate. Though I do have to say it is pretty windy indeed, if you just look at that airspeed. Land. Reverse green diesel. Annual brakes. Oh, what's that on here? Sierra Four. Oh, hello, postman 2 to 1 3 the KTX CR4. Postman 2 to 1 3, Texas 10, 4 3 0 by Victor. 4 3 0 by Victor, postman 2 3. Okay then, so quick look under here. Victor is gonna be straight and then to the left. Okay. Perfect, we can do that. So it turned out to be one of those approaches again where you just have um, too much to do as a single pilot here. Should have kept the autopilot in until we were finished with the landing checklist. That brought us a little bit into um, stability issues, but at the end we passed through the gate just about in an acceptable position. Just about. But we made it. Technically legal, but not very nice. I do have to say that. Okay, so 430 a little bit ahead and then into here on Zulu 2. And one more thing. That one. Okay, after landing checklist. So let's clap, subtract it, transponder, hold on, weather radar, off. Uh, spoilers, disarmed, APU started, after landing checklist. Okay, so we're reaching the first couple of stands. We're looking into the next couple then of the Zulu 2. So that is Zulu 1 over here. So let's see if we can get some assistance for our parking. Next to the right, and then our stand is the second on the left. Uh, 
Okay, clear right side. Okay, looks like it's not the sack, but that's simply some I'm missing on the chart. That's fine with me as well. 430 will be over there. Here it comes, 430. So A300 is correct. No counter over there. Here it comes. Oh boy. Didn't have enough thrust. I just want to be sure then that I'm not accidentally adding too much now. Here we go again. Back to idle. What's the plane doing? Why is it stopping all the time? It should really roll better than that. Okay. Here we go. So, brake set, APU is avail, number one, number two. So, engine's coming down, low 20. And let's just about leave the frequency so that we got a little bit more silence here. Okay. Fucking checklist, please. APU bleed, off engines, off differential pressure, zero, lights and signs, off fuel pumps, off wind and propeed, off parking brake and shocks. That's the brake set for now. Parking checklist complete. Okay then, so we made it over to Leipzig. It was a bit of an interesting approach there. I should certainly have kept the autopilot on for a little bit longer um, until the landing checklist was completed. Things looked quite a bit easier and more stable when we were on the um, intermediate stage of the approach compared to the final approach. And uh, well, looks like that bit is in the back. But we made it down, barely legal, but legal. And that is all that counts in the end. Okay, so disarm doors. Here we go, and then they can start unloading. So request deboarding. And onto the APU. So then, let's go ahead and open that door. By the way, it's interesting, isn't it? They do make us, um, able to open the uh, main cargo door here through the switches, but we cannot open the actual cabin entry door. So like over here, we can do nothing, but we can handle the uh, cabin door over here, that's interesting. But anyway, here we are. So, I do hope that you have enjoyed our flight today. If you did, and if you like the uh, format of how I designed the video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And with that, I am very much looking forward to see you all again on the next one. In the meantime, be sure to leave a like if you did like the video, as it does really help off the channel. Subscribe if you're up for more. And finally, if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and I see you all again on the next one.